naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. to the show today. Um, I'm Iggy Garcia. Um, I, know I came on a little earlier than, than I usually do. But uh, yeah. So I'm here to uh, try some new uh, new things out and try some new systems out. So I'm kind of working between two platforms right now. I'm working with Facebook Live and I'm actually working through, uh, let's see, through YouTube as well. And so I'm kind of going on both ends of those those spectrums so if you have problems watching one or the other you can kind of switch over to to YouTube just do it you can see a search find me on there and you, and you shouldn't have any problems so uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in I hope you guys uh, are staying dry I know the weather's been kind of kind of crappy for these last few days so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna what we do how we start every show we're gonna start with lighting a candle giving thanks and thanks our ancestors. And just kind of give that um, that gratitude, even when things don't feel uh, very grateful or very gracious at times. Uh, but you know, I'm thankful for my ancestors. You know, there's parts of them that I probably don't understand, and I don't know what they did or what they experienced or what they felt regardless I'm here to just kind of work on that get do better and hope that things get better so I don't have to worry so much about all the things they did so this candles for them I give thanks to them so with that we'll light that through the show and um, burn a little sage as well all right Giving thanks. A little sage for the kind of clear the energy a little bit. Make it feel pretty good. Move that stuff around. Mm, feels good. Really good. Yeah. And uh, last few days I've been kind of feeling kind of you know weird a little bit just because just how the energies have been rolling through so uh no guests tonight uh you are my guests so i welcome everybody to the show those of you who who are new to youtube and kind of watch my stuffs on youtube i basically what i do is i uh, just talk and i share and um and i talk about what's on my mind what's going on and what's going on uh, around the world and what's going on in iggy's world because iggy it's just like everybody else kind of goes through everything just just in a different way but either way we're here and we're doing pretty good so I do apologize if I kind of cut in and out I might be I might be just going through uh, some things on the Facebook here so I'm gonna switch over to Facebook here and kind of look uh, what's going on and see if anybody's putting any comments there on the board and hopefully you can hear me pretty well um, I think I can hear you guys uh, clicking away and I want to say hi to Sammy there and Kate and Krista and everybody who's on and everybody's kind of bouncing through I think I'm missing people as I go so I apologize if I don't say hi right away so I'm gonna give you guys little hearts here just welcoming you to the show <clears throat> there we go all right very good so <clears throat> today my topic and excuse me, I clear my throat here a little bit just because it's uh, allergy season and all the things that are nature, mother nature kind of affect me a little bit, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. So I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about my, uh, my topic, you know, my topic is pretty, pretty simple, you know, it, it's to the point and as you read it, it's, it's pretty much, I am love. I am light and I am shadows. 
So, you know, we all run the gamut. We all run those gamuts together. We all are in theirs together. And so, you know, people who want people to be in the light all the time and people who expect people to be, you know, um, I'm loving light. Well, I'm loving light, but not all the time. I'm loving light, you know, most of the time, majority of the time, yes. And I try to stay in that energy and I try to stay where that is because it's important to me. But sometimes you don't have that opportunity. Sometimes you don't have that opportunity to to uh, experience the the light in a very positive way sometimes. Sometimes we get very, um, I don't know, we get bogged down in our own feelings and emotions, our spirit. You know, we are spirit here experiencing the world in its own, uh, its own likeness and uniqueness. So when we come to planet Earth, you know, we are spirit beings. And we come here and to experience the physical reality, the physical uh, part of ourselves and the things that are important to us so that's what we try to do as we come here to planet earth uh, some of us do it really well and some of us don't some of us have a hard time experiencing planet earth some of us have a hard time uh, experiencing our own bodies and minds but we try to do the best we can and with that we try to we try to just experience things in the in the capacity that we can Right now, we're experiencing a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Our heads are going like this. Our heads are just like, holy moly, what is going on? And, you know, that's why that mantra, it's good to be here, um, is so important to me. Because it's something that just opens up the universe and brings in the love energy. And if, if, and if you guys don't know where that comes from, it's a modification to it's good for us to be here. Which actually is a biblical, biblical quote. That is a quote. It's just a little modernized. So that quote, it's good to be here, is actually, it is good for us to be here. You know, you probably heard that. You probably heard that uh, in a sermon. You probably heard that in church. And you probably heard it in many different places. But that's where I, I draw from that. Because when we would be in sweat lodge, they would say, it's good for us to be here. And I would say, it's good to be here. You know, and, and it just kind of stuck. So if you're wondering where that little little uh saying came from that little phrase came from it came from being in ceremony with uh, other native american elders and medicine people that's where i drew to it and i am you know connected to that word and that little phrase for me it's kind of like my uh my namaste uh my home you know all the things that you say ho open open all the things that we say hello and goodbye to and it's good to be here is you can say it when you, when you arrive and you can say it when you leave, so it's kind of like aloha, you know. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I'm out. So that's kind of how it works for me. So hopefully um, you understand where I'm coming from on that. So um, let's see. I'm trying to navigate uh, two platforms at the same time, and I'm, I think I'm doing okay. I'm not sure what's going on in, in YouTube land. Usually what I do is when I do a recording here on Facebook, I'll copy it download it and then i'll send it to face uh, i'll send it to uh, youtube and usually that's that's usually how i do it so today i wanted to do a little experiment so i'm gonna leave youtube alone i'm just gonna let youtube do its thing if uh if it works if it doesn't work it doesn't matter we just keep going we just can keep going with the story so right now we're going through a very interesting time and interesting is is probably not a very good word to use. Actually, it's kind of probably, there's probably many words we can use for that. There's probably many different things that we could actually say. They would kind of take us on that road. Right now, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of, we don't know this, we don't know that. And there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of holes in the next few six months there's a lot of holes even just the last three months that we experienced in a really unique way we actually entered in a time where we weren't sure what's gonna what was going to happen and what was what, what, what the game plan even was because it happened so quickly it happened so fast that it put us in a, in a frame of mind of you know, for some fearful, some people were fearful, and for others, I'm not sure what they felt. Insecurity, 
jubilation. I don't know. I don't know because I keep getting all kinds of different answers and all kinds of different responses from everybody. And everybody experiencing this quarantine, which is now, I guess it's not a quarantine anymore. I guess it's, we've phased out of that. Now we're more into kind of like going back to work, I guess. We're going back to our lives to some degree. We've returned back to where we need to be. And for some of us, <clears throat> that will be an easy task. And for others, not so easy. So I'm, I'm trying to find out how you guys feel. Today I want to ask you guys, what is on your mind? What is going on? If there's anything that I can help you answer, considering the shadow side and the light side of things. Because right now, we're, we're all in this, this, I don't know what you want to call it, this limbo. For me, it's kind of like a limbo. It's kind of like an uncertainty. Yeah, things look kind of normal. Things kind of look the same. Things kind of look a certain way. But I know that they're not. I know that they're not. And I know that we have a lot more to experience. And so when I saw all the posts and all the responses and all the things that, you know, that happened to me personally, you know, for example, you know, I would post something and somebody would respond there, you know, there's, and you guys know this, Facebook isn't the all end. Okay. So it's just a platform to express our feelings and emotions. Shouldn't get butt hurt if someone jumps your ass or thinks they're right or, or try to say that you're wrong or you jump someone's butt. Facebook is just a way like communication. It's a way to speak and to talk. Honestly, there's a lot of information rolls through here. There's a lot of stuff that comes through Facebook, uh, YouTube, and all the different social platforms. And there's a lot of things that happen. But it's not necessarily the real world. It's not... You can't compare re the real outside physical touch you, hug you, reality to Facebook, YouTube, and all the things that, that you are, and I are connected to. Which we probably even... Five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, many of us didn't even have these kind of, you know, apps and apparatuses and computers and technology that we have today. But now we get information so quickly and so fast that it comes too quickly and too fast. And sometimes the information comes so furiously that you don't even have time to check if it's legitimate or not. And even if it was legitimate, there's always a critic on Facebook. There's always a critic somewhere in social media. There's always a foodie, uh, a social foodie, I call them. You know, that needs to be have a social foodie up the butt sometimes. Okay? Sometimes our, our timelines are our timelines for us to express what we're feeling. Not to necessarily get validation. Hey, can you see if my post is right so I can kind of feel better, so I can get the clicks and I can get that dopamine rush in my head? No, I mean, for maybe for some people that is. I don't know. Not for me. I can care less. I could, I'll tell you, go F yourself if I don't like what you're saying to me. Regardless. But social media has become this new shadow. This new light. This new thing. And it's not new. It's just something that now we can, we can talk smack to people from afar. Because I'll tell you. A lot of people who talk smack to me, this is my experience. When I see them in person, they smile at me, you know? Okay, go ahead. Talk your smack now. I'm right here. What you waiting for? This is my shadow side, okay? We're talking about shadows and lights. Here it is. Listen, if you don't agree with me, just say you don't agree with me. I don't agree with you. You don't have to go into this long, long paragraph and dissertation of why you have to prove me wrong. Okay. Okay. So you prove me wrong. And Mark, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you there. What's the point? All right. Do you want to be right? If you want to be right, I'll just ignore your post. But regardless, we are light. We are shadows. We are everything. We are all. In order, shadows come from the light, man. When the sun shines, it casts shadows. Inside of our lightness, we attract good people and bad people. <clears throat> that's who we are. That's that's what our makeup is. We are part of the universe. And you know, today what was really cool was another 
another <clears throat> another conspiracy theory has been proven correct by NASA. The smart people, the scientists. So and not from Iggy, not from some guy who you know just you know just has a high school diploma because obviously that's not good enough anymore, you know. Because uh, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm kind of pissed off right now for some reason. It's my shadow side. Well, they, they found a parallel universe. The universe that we have goes one way, and the, parallel, the other part of us goes the other way. So in middle school, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I'm just going to tell you. In middle school, okay, in middle school, I talked because I went to Catholic school. I said, well, if there was a big bang, boom. Boom. What happens? Right? Okay, so creation. Boom. That means two opposing forces met in the middle. Okay? The law of physics says two opposing, opposing forces cannot occupy the same space at the same time, right? It just can't. Supposedly. I don't know. So these two opposing forces break away. And they go their direction and this is why the universe is still expanding people okay it's still creating because this force was so powerful okay this force was so amazing all right that one became this existence and one became that existence there's two Science has proven that there's at least two per good parallel universes. I believe there's multiple ones, but here we are. Boom. NASA said that, not Iggy Garcia, okay? The article is on my timeline. You can read it, you can debunk it, you can try to prove it wrong, I don't care. That's up to you if you want to waste your time. But there's two, there's, two, uh, there's two universes. We have a parallel of our universe. Science has proven that as of today, my, as my post. Maybe it was already been proven, but... As of today, uh, my post, that conspiracy theory is complete. It has been validated by our uh, nautical aerospace engineers, okay? NASA has proven. NASA has spoken. If you think NASA is a bunch of fools, then jump in line because you know that I'm sure that somebody thinks that. I mean, I remember when I said, I don't believe it. We went to the moon. Everybody went crazy. I was just trying to, I needed some answers and no one can give them to me. They just told me that their grandpa and grandma worked there and they were upset. They were offended because blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry that you were offended. I was just asking questions. So science has proven, okay, our shadow side. Our shadow side, our light side goes one way and we have a shadow side. So what's this other universe look like? I don't know. But it's kind of interesting to think about. You know that voice in your head that sometimes you wonder what's going on and where's that coming from? Maybe it's from the other parallel universe of us. So I sat today and I'm thinking and I'm pondering, you know, while I'm working and I'm thinking, okay, so there's a parallel universe to the universe that we exist. Is it like Benjamin Button? Are we, are we, do we, are we born and then we, we, we get old and then we become young, progressively grow up and young and then we die as a baby? We, we look old. You, you seen Benjamin Button? Yes. You guys have seen Benjamin Button? And so Benjamin Button that jumped into my head like boom i saw that movie okay so benjamin button i was like damn so that means there's a parallel iggy in another universe possibly i can't prove it nasa has proved it but i can't prove it i don't know how the dynamics work i don't know how it goes but if we can make believe and we could pretend and use our imagination because that's why we have them is it possible that they do everything in reverse they say everything they do is in reverse every time is taking the opposite direction okay so I find that very fascinating. I said, well, I guess I won't be late to my, to my meetings anymore, you know, because I'm already notoriously late. But I find that really interesting that we have this other version of ourselves, possibly in time. And, you know, if some of you believe in multiple universes, not just one, uh, the multiverse. And, you know, there's things that, uh, you know, that we don't really understand. You know, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, okay? Just because I have imaginary friends and you have imaginary friends does not mean that they do not exist, okay? The reality is because you can't see it or you can't touch it or taste it or feel it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, okay? Natural gas exists, 
okay? And they could kill you if it leaks in your house. But the only reason when it's leaking in your house, you don't die is because they put a chemical in it so you can smell it, okay? So there are things in the universe like that. There are things in the universe that sometimes we can't explain, all right? So when you go into this 3D, 2D, 1D, flat plane, you know, everything, Imagine yourself being an ant, and I've said this before in other shows, imagine yourself being an ant, doing your thing, you're walking through the grass, you're collecting food, you're hunting. We're so massively big that we they can't see us. They hear the boom, they hear the, the, the stomping, they hear the rustle of the wind. I'm sure they feel all that. But that's what I find fascinating about being human, is that we can ask questions and we can use our imagination. Our imagination is the reason why everything got created. Why things are being created. Why things are happening. So in this shadow version of our universe, everything is a reverse. Bizarro world, you know. Reverse Iggy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Forward Iggy. In this universe, Iggy dies. In the other one, Iggy dies and lives. You know. It's, I don't know. How's that work? I'm not sure. i got to think about that. It's kind of interesting. But anyhow, it, it happens. So, you know, this is where ideas come from. This is where movies like Star Wars and Star Trek and all these things. These, these are people with imagination, with great minds. A lot of our technology, I believe personally, has evolved from some of these movies. You know, where, you remember the little flip phones? You know, beat me up, Scotty. You know, Captain Kirk would say that. Well, that happened. You know, that we, had, we finally got a flip phone. I remember how excited I was. I was like, middle school, I think. Wow, flip phone, man. This is like... Star Trek, you know, and then what? Then we have our our laptops, not laptops, but our, our pads, you know, our, our, our phone pads. And those are like the diagnostic stuff they used to do in Star in Star Trek too, you know. And then Bones would have this little reader, you know, and they, they do that with you. They take your temperature. They take this thing and run it across your head. Just like that, remember before they used to put it in your mouth, okay, or in your butt. All right, but now they just take this little gun and they just go, Shh, and that's it. It's done. They were threat. I'm going, what? Is that it? Well, the first time they had they used that on I me, mean, I was like, you took my temperature? That's it? It's just, it's just the advancements are there. You know, so when humans want to do things and create things, they can. When, when they get stuck in the shadow parts of themselves, it's because they still have ego things that they have to work on. Okay? Our shadows aren't always bad. Okay? Because our shadows can come in very handy if we need to survive. Okay, because shadow doesn't mean bad. And that's why I'm always trying to correct people. Oh, you're in your shadow shot. No, shadow. You know, stop watching Batman so much. Batman's alter ego was his shadow. That was, the, that was the part of him he couldn't be in reality. That was the part of him that he had to express in a different way. Was it right? Was it wrong? I'm not here to judge his character or what he was doing. But regardless, he did that. So that's a good example of shadow size. The Joker, good example of the movie The Joker, just the one that came out. His shadow side. He got beaten and crushed. And he wanted to do the right things. He was a clown, man. He wanted to make people happy. But of course, not everybody was happy. And not everybody was willing to accept that. And they beat the crap out of him. And eventually he broke down. And he went into another part of his psyche. And that's what we do doing right now. That's what's happening now. The shadow sides of us are coming out. The light sides of us are coming out. During this uh, pandemic. This is a pandemic. Yeah. Some of us will survive. I could be gone next week. But I'm not going to stop living. I'm not going to stop living and quit because someone tells me uh, that I need to stay or be or whatever. You know, I personally, but I use common sense. I wear masks where they need to be worn. You know, I'm not going to be floating around all over the place with a mask. That's just me. Okay, that's me. That's what I feel. If a store requires me to wear, I'll wear it. No problem. No problem. But I think what happens is the shadow aspects of ourselves, the people who feel that things are, are, are you know, that feel that, you know, something is just like taken. Actually, we don't own anything. Humans want and need and have this desire to, to always have things and want things and control things. You know, I'll tell you right now, on the air right here, live on the air. You know, if tomorrow's my last breath, then tomorrow's my last breath. Okay? Because that's the way, number one, God wanted it. That's the way my destiny was written. 
but hopefully in the meantime, in the middle of everything, that I experienced life in a way that was unique to myself. You know, the natives would say it's a good day to die. And that just meant that I lived a good life, and you know what? And I'm, I've given what I can, and you know, it's my time. Time is an illusion anyhow. You know, it, it, it's not really real. We watch clocks, and we watch our phones, and we, we listen, look on our eye watches. Okay, because you know what? That's something that keeps us in track, keeps us going. But we don't truly die. No, we never die. Especially, you know, if you have kids, you know. Your legacy lives through them. Your legacy lives through your grandkids. And if you don't happen to have any kids, your legacy lives through the people that you inspire, the people that you touch, the people that you, your heart moves. So this is why it's so important to understand what it means to be alive, what it means to be love, what it means to be light, and what it means to be real. When you're not feeling yourself, when you're not happy, you have choices to make. You can express that, okay? Or you can re re respond to that. The problem is, <clears throat> sometimes we don't say anything and then we harbor those feelings inside of our vehicle, which is our body, which is part of the spirit, and then things get clogged up and things get trapped. I'm not saying that you have to go yell at everybody when you feel something. Sometimes you have to use candor. You have to use tactfulness. And sometimes you just have to yell and say, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, I'm not, say I'm not here to tell you what to do. But I'm just telling you, life is to be enjoyed. Life is to be experienced. Life is to be in it. Not a participant. Be part of it. Experience it. Don't be watching like the people on the roller coaster going up and down. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Be the watcher. No. I'm not saying jump on the roller coaster, but jump on the ride, man. Jump in. Enjoy it. So many of us complain and bitch and are upset because nobody does this and nobody does that. Do your part. If you're tired of people not wearing a mask, then wear your mask. Don't worry about the million people don't wear a mask. Oh, it might kill my family. Come on, man. If your family's got their mask on, they're not going to worry about. The person who supposedly doesn't have their mask on is probably going to die, right? I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know. I know as much as you know. I know as much as everybody knows. Which is probably not very much. So we, we go through life worrying and fearing and, you know, one more thing to add to the freaking plate. One more thing to add to the plate. Yeah, that's nice. I uh, Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you're making us all fearful. Yeah, there's a bug out there. And he's nasty. You may see him. You may not see them. I don't know. I don't. Personally, if this is my last episode and tomorrow I'm not here and I die of COVID, hey, I lived. I drummed. I danced. I played. I don't have any regrets. I don't have any. I can't. I'm not going to say. There's some things I would love, like to do. I would like to do. That I have probably not done yet. But I can tell you right now. That I'm going to go to the places that I need to be. Because I know that we don't die. Energy doesn't die. I'm energy. I'm you know. I am an energetic spiritual being. That will not. Will never die. I will transmute and change. Yes. I may not come back the same. Yes. I may not look the same. Yes. Yes. Depending on what school of thoughts you believe. Because your thoughts and your school of thoughts also imprint onto what happens next to you. I'm a firm believer of that. If you believe that you come back as a person, another person, then that's where you go. Because your imagination, you create. You never stop creating. You're always creating. So the words that you speak, the words that you dish out to the world, all right? The words that you dish out to the world are prayers, man. When you go... I hate this place. I hate Donald Trump. I hate Nancy Pelosi. I hate Iggy Garcia. You know, you say all those things. It becomes manifestation. It becomes real. It becomes more amplified for you. Now, you say that to somebody else. They may not believe you. You say that to somebody. Oh, I hate this. I don't hate it. Well, you should hate it because I hate it too. No, I don't see... I don't see what you're hating about it. 
but I choose not to hate about it because I choose to look something else on the other side of that. On that shadow, there's also a light, so I choose to look there. It's not a very bright light, but it's a bright enough for me to look and see. So many people spend so much time being upset about stupid stuff. It's stupid because you believe it, because you've owned it, and you've allowed it into your heart, into your system. You're only pissed off because all the memories and experiences that come with that. Every day that you move forward, every day I move forward, we can become something else. We're not, we're, not, we're not owned by the stuff that happens to us in the past. The past is there just to remind us the past was real. Yeah, it was real. But it doesn't mean that it controls and owns you. If, if you hold on and harbor on that, it's hard to move into the next existence. Because you'll keep moving to the next existence carrying that baggage. I'm not saying throw it away. Rewrite the story, man. Because by the time you've written, rewritten that story, that story has changed five million times. I fell down and broke my leg. Okay, I fell down and broke my leg because I wasn't thinking. I fell down and broke my leg because I was running. I fell down and broke... Actually, I didn't fall down and broke my leg. Someone pushed me. I fell down and broke my leg. Hey, hola, como estas? I do that too. And I'm not, not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But when we rewrite our story, rewrite those shadow aspects... Because those can become shadows. Those can become anchors. Those are the things that hold you back. Those are the things that won't let you progress forward. Because somebody told you that you have to be a victim. Someone says you have to own that. Because if you don't own it, then someone else. Listen. Some people have bailed on people. Because, not because of principle. Okay, they bailed on people because you know what? It ain't good enough for them. You've been victims of that. I've been victims of that. I've been victimized by people. But I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim because I won't let them own me. I won't let them come into that space. Because if they're, if they're not happy, it's on them. It's them not happy, not me. If they're angry, it's them that are angry. They're, I've made, I'm that powerful that I can make somebody angry and upset. I'm that powerful that I can make somebody happy and laugh. It's the energy that we associate and that we put on other people is what happens. I, you know, we give away our, ourselves a lot more and not just in negative ways. We give ourselves away in positive ways, but we also receive. See, that's the part people forget. When you give away part of yourself, you also receive back. So that's why it's important to know who your friends are, what you're reading, what you're listening to. What, 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 what's in your life? What's going on? Into manner and control the things that you can control. There's things you cannot control. You can't control the weather. Even though they think they can. It rained for the last two days, right? Yeah. So, you go in your mind. Oh, it's a crappy day. It's raining. And then you're finally counting your mind. You start going into the final cabinet. Experience number one, experience number two. What did I do on my last rainy day? Oh, I slept in. I rested. That's what I'm going to do today. It was good for me. Good. Other people are like, damn it. Now I can't. Now my work has been prolonged. We work from experience and from memories and from ego and all those things. All right? And I can sit here and say, hey, it's easy to do, but it's not. Why? Because in here, my brain, which has never seen light before ever, doesn't even know what it looks like. Okay, it's never seen it, never experienced it, but it can translate the vibrational energy back to me and sends it back through my eyes, flips the f image, runs it to my brain. My brain translates it and goes, that's light. My hands touching the ground, touching the desk. My hands touching my fingers. My brain doesn't know what f fingers are, what it feels like. It only knows what it sees and it only knows what it feels. We're the same way. We don't know anything. We don't know anything outside this, this place. When's the last time, which, how many of you have traveled on a spaceship and gone off the planet Earth? Okay. I'm just waiting. For some hearts or thumbs. But anyhow, my point is, we can't, we don't have any perspective. Except through pictures and through 
you know, animation. Because a lot of these pictures that we watch are animation. They recreated. I'm not saying that it's not doesn't look like that. I'm just saying that's just how the computer translates it back and how the things are the images are translated back. And then our eyes look at these images and then it translates and then it sees familiar familiarity and then we go, I know that place. Because you know what? We're not from here. We're star beings. We're we're creatures. We're 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 we're, we're, we're much bigger than we give ourselves credit. Okay? And I'm talking about the physical body, guys. Astral projection and all that stuff. I know some of you guys are really super good at that. And lucid dreaming. And that's awesome. But I'm talking about physically get on a spaceship and travel and go. Why do we look at the stars? Even though they're there at night, during the day. They're there too. They're there. Just because the sun's out doesn't mean they're not there. There's the shadow aspects, man. There's... And just like us, it's there. It's there. Out there exists, but out there is not out there. Because out there is here. We're here. You know? Can't see the virus, right? But we know it exists, right? Because we trust and we believe what we're being told. And people are dying. But people die every day. People die from the flu. People die from heart attacks. People die... From getting run over. People just... That's our destiny, man. We're supposed to die. Our physical body is supposed to trans, transition over. That's... that's We're born to, to die. Live to die. And in the middle, we live. And then we die. And then... What happens? I don't know. We'll find out. To be continued, I guess. I don't know. We'll find out when we get to that place. But why not enjoy this place while we're here? Why not live here? Some of us have the capacity to do it and some of us don't because some of us just have put so much and there's so many imbalances in our body and our chemistry that we're not able to. Because our bodies <clears throat> don't always come in perfect and well oiled. Even cars, when you buy them off the lot, not all of them work the same over a period of time. But if we understand that our humanity and that we're going to die, that our bodies will break down. There they are breaking down. I'm breaking down. I'm 53, but I don't look, I don't look like I did when I was 25. <clears throat> and that's good. I'm okay with that. I'm all right. I feel like I'm 25 sometimes and I might act like I'm 25 sometimes, but because I still have 25 in me. So the shadow aspects are sometimes are there and we don't even notice. The shadows, we, we move through them, we weave through them, and we dance through them. As much as when the light comes, the shadows come. We, we, it's a dance. It's a magical dance. And, you know, sometimes you need to be in your shadow. Sometimes you do some of your best reflection in the shadows. When you're upset <clears throat> and you're frustrated and you hit that point where you're just like, Screw everything. Because then you get to sit there. And you get to sit there. And you get to sit there. And to the point where you just kind of go. Then you're just tired of listening to yourself. And then you take action or you don't. Or you just go back to your old ways. Or you find solutions to what you want to do better. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Life is very magical if you allow it to be. And some of you aren't in the best situations, and I get that. The situations are there. <clears throat> but it doesn't mean you can just stop. It doesn't mean you stop. Just because your life sucks, in your opinion, your own opinion, or your life is great, you don't stop. Even when it's great, you don't stop. <laughs> you don't quit. Because when you fall down, the only place, the only thing you can do is get back up. Boom, up, boom, up. Everybody falls. Everybody learns. You know, I've learned some very important things about myself being in those dark places. You know, dark places can take you on some amazing trips. And it take you on some amazing journeys. 
right now we're an amazing journey. I mean, I think you guys understand that. I think you get that. We're an amazing journey right now. We're an amazing journey of self-discovery. We're in an amazing journey to look at ourselves retrospectively, to look at ourselves in projection, projecting forward into the future, and to see just a brief little picture of what we want. It's not always going to be perfect. Who the hell wants to be perfect, man? Not me. I like a little flawness in me. Because it knocks me down and makes me think. Imagine people walking around thinking that nothing's wrong and everything's perfect. Anyhow, that's an illusion too. So love. Love is that, that intermediator between shadow and light. Because love loves regardless. Love is never stops. You know, some see, some would say it's all love. All of it. But first you got to believe in what love is. In our culture, we only have one word for love. But we use inflections when we speak about love. I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. It's inflections. When we use inflections in our in our communication of love here in the States, in the Western culture, it's it sends an energy. The word love in itself sends energy. I love you. I love you. And you can almost tell what I'm saying. You can almost feel what I'm saying. When I say I love you, when I say, when I, let's try, the, let's experiment. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do a little experiment. Ready? But you guys have to respond, okay? And let me know if you feel it, okay? I love you. You can feel that. The words came out of my mouth. But there was no, there was no, nothing behind that. Right? Hopefully you can feel that. That's what I say. Love you. You see how that works? Now. You go. I love you. I love you. You're awesome. I love you. You, you see there's a smile comes with that. There's an emotion with that. When you say I love you. Oh I love you. you when you see little babies. Oh they're so cute. I love them. In Western culture, the word love is associated with, love, with the word and emotion attached to it. That's why people can say, well, I can tell he doesn't love me because he doesn't say it the way he used to. Or she doesn't say it the way he used to. Because it's true. Emotion behind the words are just as powerful. You know, so, I love you. Boom. I love. Love. <clears throat> And then you get her romantic love, right? Love you. Love you. I love you. <laughs> That's cheesy. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> love you. But you get what I'm trying to say. So it's all love. You know, somebody asked me one time, because I used to use that word a lot. All, it's all love. It's all love, man. And then one lady told me, she goes, Iggy, so if it's all love, in the day this guy tried to kill me and wrap me in a rug and threw me and left me for dead. It was a cop who did this to some girl. And I was, that made me really think. That makes you think, doesn't it? And I'm going, yeah, that's a weird way to love somebody. And we had this deep conversation, she and I. <clears throat> it was probably the most uncomfortable conversation I ever had in a long time. When this person asked me, how can it be all love if this happened to me? And I sat there and I wondered, you know, maybe it's the way we express all love, you know? I don't know what was going through her mind at the time. And I, and you know, it's, 
it was a powerful message for me to know that that word is important when you use it. And, and I was really taken back. She was not upset with me because I didn't really have an answer for her at that time. And sometimes I think about that conversation when I used to use the word all love. It's all love. And I do that sometimes. I still use it from time to time. But I also learned really quickly that it's a trigger for some people when you say it's all love. Love is not necessarily the most loving word for some people. It's just like when people say people are pure evil. I don't believe anybody's pure evil. I don't, because I have no reference point. But anyhow, and I remember this story, this girl, she was telling me this, and I was like, well, you know, not that he didn't love you. It was her boyfriend. It's that he loved you in a way that just was really messed up, really fucked up, if you ask me. And I don't know the whole story, so I don't know why it got to that point. I know she loved him, though. And I'm supposed, guessing he loved her, too, but... <clears throat> when you hit somebody in the head with a hammer and put them in a rug and leave them for dead, she survived. <sighs> you start to question a lot of things about life. You start to question a lot about, you know, what love means to people and what words mean to people, what triggers people. So when, not to compare the two, but you know, when right now in modern moment that we're in this moment we're in not modern but in this moment about the pandemic excuse me the pandemic we talk about people losing their lives and people wearing and not wearing masks i believe there are triggers for people i believe there are things that people align themselves with and yes Jennifer you're right words are powerful and when we align ourselves energetically with certain things then we fall into patterns of what that means or what that feels like then we find other people you know who do the same thing it's kind of like people who are recovering alcoholics they, they go to these groups and they keep talking about you know, the recovery, how they get better. I never went, but these are just stories people tell me. And they keep, they go to all these things over and over and over. And it almost feels like there's no hope for them because they just, it's like they found another addiction. Something else to do, which is probably better for them than the alcohol anyhow. But, but that's what my friend told me about, you know, being in AA. It was like an, another addiction. I was like, really? See, well, think about it. You're in there, you, you, you're drunk, you're telling your story over and over, sometimes to the same people, and then they give you this coin after you're sober for so long. And so this coin puts a lot of pressure on you. Okay, and, and it's a reminder, a gratitude. But everybody's different, okay? So let's let's be nice. But he says, you know, it was harder, it was, that was harder for him to go to AA meetings than it was to drink a beer. Why? Because he had to talk about himself. He had to share his shadows. He had to share his light. He had to share love that he wasn't even able to give to himself. So sometimes sitting in a circle and talking about things is helpful and sometimes it's very difficult. But hopefully at some point people are able to open up and express and share what they need to share. But that's all we can really do as we sit here as humans and sit here and, you know, ponder what's our next move. Energetically, if we're connected energetically like we say we're connected, that this collective mind, 
okay? This collective mind says we're going to spread this thing more. We're using this as an example, the, the virus, which has probably mutated by now many times. And hopefully you mutate itself out of existence. There is a physical aspect, but there's also a mental aspect to this. If we keep repeating the same thing over and over all the time, then our energies will go to that. Okay? The human body is very resilient. We fight things off all the time. The human mind is very fragile. And we fight things off all the time. Okay, so there's things happening chemically, okay, physically, emotionally, spiritually in us. So when part of the herd is saying we should stay home, that part of the herd believes that. And that part of the herd, you cannot change that. The other part of the herd <clears throat> says, we need to get out of the house and run free. We can't be behind this stage, this locked fence and be put in here and controlled. No matter what you tell them, they're going to keep, they're going to do it. Okay? And even if somebody in their family passed away from it, they'll probably keep doing it. So, herds stick with herds. Okay? So, the herds that believe that we should wear masks will stick with the people who wear masks. The people who think they shouldn't have wear masks stick with the masks. And then there's this other herd in the middle. They're kind of like, yeah, I wear it sometimes. Yeah, 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 I'll come with you. I like guns too. I like my amendment rights. Oh, I'll sacrifice my rights right now. It's just, it's just reality, folks. It's what we, it's in front of us. Now we can be upset. We can be angry. So how can we shift that? How can we shift that energy? How can we move it? Not to bring anybody to our side. Not to say, oh, well, we got another one. He's a masker now, you know. Come on, welcome. Oh, look at this one. I got a skull mask for you, you know. I, I think... I think when we individually believe what we believe and when we're where you are where we are, people watch you. People observe you. People can read you pretty quickly. And then you know what? Then you don't have to worry. Those people over there will always do what they want to do, okay? And these people over here will always do what they want to do. And these people right in here will always do what they want to do. So the best thing you can do is work on you and work on what's important to you. What is important and what needs to be worked on. To spend so much time and energy to try to change all these people and all these people in the middle is just not conducive to your health. The best thing you can do, if you want to wear a mask, wear it. And that's it. Put it on. Your family wants to wear it, wear it. Put it on. We don't have to play the scarlet leather crap shit thing anymore, okay? And because you have a mask on, we're going to shun you. Or you're not going to shun the people because they don't have masks on. Because they don't think like you. Hello, people. Not everybody thinks like you. That person next to you doesn't think like you. Your own kids don't think like you. Your spouse doesn't think like you, Okay? So why are you putting so much energy into it? But I want to save lives. Save your life. Stop being the martyr. Stop martyrizing yourself. You want to live? Put your mask on. Okay? If that guy doesn't want to wear his mask, that's your, not your problem. Your problem is that you need to worry about you. And that person needs to worry about them and them. Then when people worry about their own business, then we all come to some common ground. Okay? We come to some common ground. And these are the shadow parts. This is the shadow and lights of our community. This is the shadow lights of love. So everything that you're looking at is a version. The people on this side think you're the shadow. Okay? I'm just going to tell you that. And some people on this side think they're the shadow. And the people in the middle says, where's the shadow? Where's the light? Because we're getting beamed by both sides. And they're kind of getting the shadow on this side and the light on this side. 
and I know that some of you ebb and flow and you move through energies and you move through stuff and I get it. So the shadow aspects of ourselves are just things that we project out to the world. The light things of our life that we expect, we, we project out to the world. They're only from memories, okay, and things in our mind, and this thing. You know, if there's a virus or no virus, I can't stop. I got to keep going forward. I can't live in fear. Because I know what fear do, did to me years ago. I'm not saying that I'm not fearful and I don't have fearful moments. But I understand better now because I have a point of reference of what fear will do to you and what will do to somebody if you allow it. And yes, the illusions. You're correct, Jennifer. As you guys are typing. And the perceptions that we see, yeah. Well, they're actually our own perceptions. And they are our own illusions of what we think, what we think we see translated back into the filing cabinets of our mind. Because in our head, we've created stories. And these stories in our mind is we project them forward and we project them onto people sometimes. And we project them onto situations and we move them forward. It doesn't make it right or wrong. It's just, it is what it is. Two people, five people, six people will see a car accident and they'll all see different things. The illusion is different from different angles. Ask the magician. Angles are important. So whatever angle you're looking at this virus from, whatever you're looking from, whatever point of view you're looking from, okay, you're going to see it different. If you see it from this side, because your family does as a doctor, if you see it from this side because your dad, you know, is a politician, if you see it from this side because your father owns a restaurant, if you see it from this side because your family owns a business, if you see it from this side because you're unemployed and you have no job and you can't get unemployment, and you see it from this side, you know, it's going to be different. Could you imagine the person who can't get unemployment, what's going on through their mind right now, what's happening to them? Hopefully they have, and you know what? You don't prepare for this because we don't, we're not taught to be prepared for this kind of stuff at school. They don't prepare you for these kind of things, which they should. You should have so much stored, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. But they don't prepare us for this. We didn't, when I went to school, my uncle's on the show listening. Jorge's on the show listening, you know. They don't, they don't teach you about pandemics, you know, or earthquakes or things, you know, or whatever, you know, it's coming your way. They just want you to be a good citizen, write those checks, pay those bills, put gas in the car, do it again and do it again. All right? So now here we are on this grand opportunity to make things better and we're fighting each other. Uh, man, we'll always fight each other, I guess. I guess that's, that's the lesson I'm learning very quickly. That we'll change, but we won't change. We will change what's needed to be changed, but we will continue doing certain things the same way because they have served everybody in the past. I don't know. I'm learning how to play guitar. I've never been able to do that before. But you know what? We're in a time to be able to express ourselves in a way that's very magical. But make sure it's magical, you know? You know don't go from magic to like, ah! You know, we get enough of that already. Man, I'm like, I want to go into this new era, this new, you know, uh, movement, you know, creating and embracing and loving. And, you know, my drum circles have been canceled and I'm not upset. What can I do? I can still drum by myself. Yeah, it's nice to drum with people. Yeah, I lost a good portion of my business drumming and holistic work. And that means it's not over. It just means it's on hiatus right now. It means I have to create something else to get me through this moment in time. I can sit there and go, you know, but I'm not going to do that. Why? I'm still doing my shows. I'm still doing. Because that's what you do. You survive. You you go. You know, we, we, we I don't have time to stop and go, oh, man, you know what? Because I know what it would do to me. 
personally. I know the consequences of me going into that abyss, that mental abyss of sulking and being frustrated. I know exactly what that means to me. I know where it will take me, and I know what will happen to me. That's why I won't do it. And, you know, not everybody has that ability to recognize that. I learned at a young age how to recognize that. But I wasn't always good at it, but I honed that skill over time. You know, I'm not sure where we go from here, and it's okay. No problem. I'm okay with that. But I know we're going someplace because we just do. You never stop. You continue moving on. You continue moving forward. You just, you go to that, that space. And you know, right now is a good time to be alive. And like I said, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. But you gotta say it with, you gotta say it with everything. It's good to be here. There's a big difference when you say that because everything opens up. And may the highest purpose be served. May God surprise me and bless me with the universe and care, shower me with abundance and friends and relationships and all the good people and all the good things that, that I am entitled to because I am part of it. I'm part of the universe. That's what it is. Pandemic, I don't care. It sounds, you guys may sound, think it's crazy. I don't care. I don't, you know, I have family members who had COVID, for those of you who didn't know that. No names need to be released. But you know what? That's part of evolution. That's part of life. It happens. It could happen to me. You know what? Life continues. Life moves on. Life evolves. Hopefully I left a mark on life to a certain group of people, to my grandkids, my kids. And people who love me. They could carry my message on. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't care about the pandemic. I care that. You know the people that I have around me are still with me. Yeah that's important. But the pandemic regardless if it's here or there. I can't let it control me. I can't let it take over my mind. Number one. Can't let it take over me physically. Alright. Because if I do then I'm just opening myself up to some bad stuff. Because when your mind goes, when your mind goes into those places, you know, it, 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 it attracts the energies to open up holes in your body that you already have, emotional holes and scars that you already have, and amplify this stuff. Okay, so you have to mind your language. You have to mind what you say to yourself. You know, you're going to make it. If you're, if you're here today or if you're here already right now, you're going to make it. You're going to be okay. All right? I believe that. I'm a firm believer of that. About a couple months ago, I was just praying that no one got sick. But now, since we're moving through this pretty quickly and we're moving through it, not because we opened, just because we're physically moving through this stuff. And some of us have stepped out and come back in and moved to energies. Our minds start to become very powerful and very strong. We start to go, you know what? No. No. Mm -mm. You know what? I know there's COVID. I know there's the flu. I know there's all kinds of millions of things that could kill me. Okay, that I can't see. But it doesn't mean I have to stop. And if I happen to perish because of it, then I perish. That's it. What am I going to do? I have no control of that. It might be too late. It might be too soon. Who knows? You cannot. You cannot. You cannot let it beat you. Okay. Because once it beats you, you're done. That's it. You may be able to pull out of it, but then you pull, you pulled out, and you're scarred, and you're you're a mess. Life continues, never stops. You know, there's. I'm not the first or last human being to be on this planet, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to experience life. You should experience life. You should live life how you feel is important to you. Experience life in in the the taste, in the feeling. In the, you know, that that lust for life that we've lost. That's been kind of been ingrained, pushed out of us a little bit. Okay. And you know what? That's what happens. And when you get to this point, it's not easy. Okay. When you get to this point where you're like, love, light, and shadows. It's a lot of fun, actually. They're not easy. 
I know me. I can't be one extreme or the other because it's just weird. I can see the weirdness in that. If I'm in the shadows too long, it's weird. It's like, whoa, what the heck's wrong with you? And then if I'm in the light too long, it's like, whoa, what's wrong with you, man? You're weird, man. That's just me talking to me. Don't do that. Let's find that harmonic balance. Harmony, like the orchestra playing. Every piece and part of me has its job. The cymbals, the clarinets, the trumpets, the violins, the cellos, the drums, the piano, the conductor. Tries to bring all the pieces together into harmony. And when you bring it into harmony, you bring in a magical balance. A balance that is not necessarily always even, but a balance of tipping the scales like this. Because even in an orchestra, you have moments of this. You're playing the game. Because you're trying to bring that harmonic, that harmonic together. Those sounds together. If I miss my cue, you keep playing. You don't stop. You don't quit. A lot of people quit and stop. Oh, I made a mistake. No, go. Keep going. No one noticed. Keep going. You tripped. No one cares. They, they know you tripped. They just want to see if you're going to get back up or they're going to look at you. It's just like the harmonics in an orchestra, the harmony and everything moving together, flowing together like waves moving. That's life because there's hiccups even in the orchestra. There are hiccups. One fret got pushed too soft. One got pushed too hard. I missed the wrong fret. I missed the wrong key. I pushed the button. My hand cramped on me. My foot cramped. My elbow. You know, but they don't stop. They, they don't quit. And so that's what I'm asking everybody to do. So when you're in the shadows, don't quit. Find your way back out. If you're in the light, find your way back into We want to create that harmonic place, that harmonic place, that harmony which comes to love, because love is both opposites of the scale, the dark and the shadow, because <laughs> dark can love dark, light can love light, okay? It's all there, right? So guys, I know that I try to explain my version of what love and light is and shadows, and it's good to be here, scenarios, but in the end, you'll have to make your own decision what's best for you. And what's going to help you get through this particular situation, this moment in time? Uh, what's going to help you in other situations? You know, there's a lot to chew on right now. And I get that. There's a lot happening right now. There's a lot of interesting things. But I encourage you to work and to get to that place. To do better for yourself. To help yourself find these places. All right. You know, there's some important things to work on and there's some things we just need to let go. And there's some things that we have to embrace. And there's some new things that we want to learn. Some new things we want to bring into our life. All right? You guys, you guys have the tools. You just need to start using them. Okay? A lot of you already use them because I'm reading some really amazing comments, you know, from everybody. From Chris to Jennifer and everybody who's on here. From Ian and everybody. You guys had some very valid, powerful points. And you know... That's what, we, that's what we do as human beings. So I hope that you got something out of this uh, show tonight. And hope that you were able to uh, follow along what I was trying to explain. And what I was trying to get at. Because I know it's not easy. And sometimes I kind of go off. Off the, off the reservation a little bit. Or off the rails or whatever you call it. And I get really passionate and get really get that Italian, Native American, Spanish guy comes on. You know, I get kind of very into that place. But bring it all back. So on Friday, I have a special guest, Chief Cloud Paller of the Nemen Hall will be here. He'll be talking with us. He's one of my uh, mentors. He's one of my elders who I work with closely. So that's going to be a really good show. So I hope you guys don't miss that one. But um, yeah, just stay focused, stay strong, just keep moving forward, do the best you can every day. Just it's good to be here. Ho'oponopono, matakuyasin, 
you know, a ho, namaste, all the things that you believe in your alignment with, embrace that. Embrace that and love that, honor that. When you see another person and they don't smile, don't take it personal. You know what? They're just going through something. But you smile. Don't, don't smile because you're looking for a response. Smile because you care. Smile because it means to you. You know? There's, there's a song that I was listening to the, yesterday. And it talks about being an alien, being different. Everybody looks at you because you're different. And they laugh. But she goes, I look at them because they're different and I laugh. So depending what side of the shadow you're on or what side of the light you're being cast on, you know, we all have our perceptions and our illusions of that. All right, so I will see everybody Friday and we will get back out there. There could be, I might have a pop-up drum circle coming up down at Greg's Reservoir. I just thought I'd say that, but don't tell anybody. Because that's the only day we're going to have sunshine. So anyhow, guys, I love you very much. Be well. Be good to each other. Be good to yourself. Okay. It's all love. It all starts in here. The game begins in our mind and works itself through our body. And then we go. All right, guys. Take care. Be well. And I will see you guys next time on Iggy Garcia Live. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you next time.